How's it going guys? On today's episode of All About Fishing, we're at a lagoon for World Fish Migration Day and we're targeting and releasing 200 barra thinglings at a length of 18 to 20 centimetres long. Some people may think that releasing these barra is pointless, but when you're catching fish like this, it's hard to argue. How's it going guys? I'm Aaron. I'm Darcy. This is All About Fishing. Today we're here at, with Scott from NQ Dry Tropics, and this is World Migration Day. World Fish Migration World Day. World Fish Migration, Migration Day. Day. We're yep. here releasing barra back into the waterways and different species of fish as well, or just the barra? Just barra today into Gritsia's Lagoon. Um, yep. Yeah, so it's part of World Fish Migration, World Fish Migration Day. Um, yeah, so there's approximately 300 events happening worldwide this weekend, and we're one of the first, I guess, because of the time zone. So, yeah. Awesome. Um, so today we're just tagging and releasing barra and where have most barra ended up throughout the system that you've recorded so far? Okay, um, barra's been getting tagged in this system for quite some time, approximately five to ten years. Um, they have gone from this lagoon itself, which is Gritsia's lagoon, to far away as places such as Cook, Cook Town and further south. So that's quite a couple of hundred kilometres heading north in their migratory pattern. So um, how often a year do you do it? Is it just the one time a year or...? Um, yeah, well, we're actually working with the stocking group. Now this year they're alone they're stocking 70,000 barramundi, predominantly in the dams, so the Burdekin Dam, where yep. fish can't migrate anymore because of the barriers up there. But we also have a, a rate that we put in these local little lagoons, so... Um, yeah, and the... The, um, the fishing... The st fish stocking group is also, a, a lot of them contribute out of their own money and some of them are pro fishermen so they're looking after their livelihood by stocking these lagoons. Alright, so how many fish have we released today? Um, we've got a total of 200 and we're spacing them out over the day so you know, kids can come up after soccer and release. So I think we've done about 100 so far so oh, we've got great, a few great. to go. And yeah. throughout the year, where do you expect them to move within this year of releasing? How far do you reckon they'll travel? Well, they may push as far up the systems as they can. We have a few fishways on some of the structures moving upstream, so they might stay here, but they might migrate all the way to the top of the system as far as possible. A lot of the time, rain pulses will get them to, to travel up, but, yeah, um, they do slow down at this time of year. <laughs> awesome. So, well, what's the average growth rate of a barramundi? just really depends on the temperature and the f available food. Um, they can grow quite significantly. We do put them in um, recycling pits. We have put them in at um, about 300 mil and they can come out at the end of the wet se or dry season at um, 60 mil. So they can virtually double their size if the food's there. Um, so yeah, and they're really good. Um, so we're using these fish today um, not only to restock the rivers, but to, as a control and exotic fish like tilapia, um, three spot guamis, and uh, gambusias. Awesome. And those fish are not good for the waterways because they do what? They just outcompete with the native fish. So gambusias have been here for a long time, or everyone may know them as guppies. So right. they they live in the top of the water column. So any food that falls on the top, they they get the first bite of that food. So the food doesn't go down to the the other fish in the other layer, other yeah. in the in the water column. They're very competitive, also, so they'll out they'll push out other native fish, um, and they also pick up the fins of native fish, so they get infections, so it weakens uh, them. Uh, uh, that's um, Even though they're small, a thousand little guppies will still do a lot of damage. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They, they they will um, target your mosquito fish, which they originally brought in for, but. Um, we have native fish that do that. For instance, rainbow fish, they're ideal at mozzie eating mosquitoes and they've got a small mouth, so if you have a pond at home, they'll eat your mozzies but they won't eat your tadpoles. So yeah, so they're a great little pest control, but um, you know, we brought them in for... Um, I think they came in actually through the Second World War in Townsville, in this area alone, because there was a lot of mozzies around the town common and the soldiers from overseas at the time said, hey, we've got a a great cure for these mozzies and so they came over. That's the local dairy. It's not... Uh, not set concrete. Yeah, 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 exactly. Oh, oh, um, awesome. So that's the, the gambusia, uh, the mozzie, I mean the, the guppy. Yep. The other one's the, the tilapia. 
<clears throat> the three spot guarani that's a, a aquarium escapee yep. um, a lot of the pr problems people get fish and they go and release them into the creek systems because they're they've looked after them while it becomes a hassle they don't clean the tanks and went oh, i won't they won't want to kill their pets so they go and pick they do a kind thing and let them go in the creek system so um that's how they got in here so the, the barrows will control them and then tilapia are pushing everywhere these days. Yeah, tilapia are horrible. Yeah, and generally, the barrel of them. yeah, exactly. So generally, where you got poor water quality, you get exotic fish. But if you got healthy um, water quality and native plants and that, you get natives. So natives attract natives, and pests attract pests, basically. And no. you're trying to spread awareness for this. Yes. Pretty much well, yeah. So we've got a, a project at the moment where it's called restoring um, the Burdekin coastal ecosystems for the Great Barrier Reef and Ramsar wetlands, and we're working with the Lower Burdekin Water Board and the Burdekin Shire Council. Now, in the past, a lot of uh, effort has gone in with uh, money from the Australian government and the state government to clean up these systems. Once upon a time, these were covered with um, aquatic weeds, were floating aquatic weeds, and that was stopping. The, the wind action, the lapping, they were sucking a lot of oxygen out of the water, and you just generally didn't have healthy wetlands. Yeah, so. and as you can see now, it's <coughs> a lot clearer now. Oh yeah, yeah, it's absolutely, driving. absolutely. I mean, ideally, we'd like to see some more riparian vegetation along here because that sort of that shades the creek banks yep. and keeps the water cooler. The cooler the water, the more oxygen. So the more oxygen, the more fish. Yep. You also get branches falling, so you got more structure for those yeah. fish. So yeah. different fish live in different. Yeah, yeah, and the um, yeah, just in the water column, if you've got structure, like fish will live at all different levels. Yep. So, if you've got a structure, you'll have those fish living in those different areas. So, yeah, oh, it's a great good. thing you guys are doing, it's really yep. helping out the yep. waterways and it helps out us. Yep, and we get to catch them. Yep, yep, yep. We, we get well, to thank you for it. Yeah, no worries, thanks. 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 Hey guys, remember to like and favorite this video. Subscribe to us on YouTube and like us on Facebook for photos and news on upcoming videos.